myself in jail. Just some courage. The whole thing is trying to say, let's go. Welcome one, welcome all. It's time for NCAA Soccer here on the Cougars Broadcasting Network. Alongside my broadcast colleague today, Aaron Schellen, I'm Peter Ferrari. Aaron should be an outstanding matchup, a city rivalry like no other. The visiting Flames of UIC had a bid south, southeast, I guess you could say, to reach the beautiful field here. It's a field of blue, but Aaron, it's going to be hot on the field day. We got the Smurf turf here at Gwendolyn Brooks <laughs> High School between the Cougars and the Flames. And Cougars, fourth season as, as a program, a, a, a program that's up and coming. They've got some good young talent, but still kind of working their way through it here as they try to find an identity. Sure. Well, and when you look at, they already have some wins on the season. As you say, if they came away, we talked about a pregame, if they came away with a victory here today against the visiting Flames, it would be a you know, program record, it's going to be a tough challenge. UIC having an excellent season out of the Missouri Valley Conference. However, with that being said, anything can happen. It's a home game for them, and they've been growing each and every game this year. Yeah, they play a very physical style of defense, a very high-pressure style of defense that, that really forces the opposition to be really crisp in their passing mm -hmm. and be able and willing to make four or five, six perfect passes in order yeah. to break into the offensive zone, and they'll take advantage of it if you look at their numbers, and we'll talk more about it over the course of the game, but if you look at their numbers, they tend to wear down their opposition, and these Cougars play a whole lot better in the second half than they do in the first half, but some of these slow starts yeah. have, uh, have sort of doomed uh, the Cougars here in the early going. Well, and not only that, Defensively, though, they've done fairly well. Sure, there were some games that um, they w let a few go by. I'm sure they'd love to have back. But typically speaking, when you have a 1-0 game, a 2-0 game, you show that that's one of the hardest parts is stopping the opponent. You know, I had a good conversation this weekend with a, a different coach at the NCAA level uh, in a different conference. But point of that conversation was they were an up-and-coming program as well. And so I asked them, okay, how do you formulate your team? You are new. You, are, you have a newer program. You're a newer coach, newer staff. And he said, first and foremost, you formulate Blitz. defense. Who he said, because you can always find... A top player at the high school level that you know that can put it in the back of the net, but you want to formulate what's our defense, what's our strategy, how are we building as a core of the program, and then we can always find, and even in the transfer portal, a player that might want to come in, puts them in the back of the net. So the fact that defensively Chicago State has had a good season so far, to me that shows that they have the groundwork for something successful. And it starts on the back line, number 12, Cal Wayne Allen, the senior out of Jamaica. He'll have that ball on his right foot pretty regularly regularly as, as the Cougars look to start their counterattack and their offense. And then 
Down on the other side, it'll be Danny Sergeyev. He is six foot five. He's always that target on those those high crosses, those corner sure. kicks. So that's somebody you'll want to keep an eye out for for the Cougars as well. A height of which I will never understand. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> But again, you know, we talked about they had two victories this year, one against UW-Milwaukee, one against UAB. And it's not like those are brand new programs in their own right. So already a lot to look forward to for the CSU squad. They'll be going right to left wearing their home grays, green numbers and letters, black trim the visiting flames, wearing the fire engine red numbers with white trim and their navy blue kits with the four red stars across the back of the shoulders. About a... 25, 30 minute drive, depending on when they left. You know, they probably, you know, with the Chicago traffic, it could be six hours on a good on a good day. But they got here early enough, got some got some work in. That one going back in the goal today. We'll talk about the starters now that we have a minute. Again from my broadcast colleague Aaron Sheldon. I'm Peter Ferreri. Getting the start in goal for the Flames is gonna be Andres Vasquez. Their typical starter, Oren Osher bit dinged up at the ankle level, and so they said, you know what, we're going to give him a rest day. We're going to see if Vasquez can do for us. The redshirted senior out of Pittsburgh, pride of Central Catholic, going to get start back in the net. And as for the home Cougars, it's going to be none, none other than number zero, Lucas Fontana, out of Peoria. Yeah, and you'll see that a lot in, in these kind of early season, non-conf type games where you're, you're not playing a conference opponent. Try to give other players, maybe not an opportunity, but mm -hmm. just to kind of see what some of your other, other players can do. And, and with Asher a little bit dinged up, throw the redshirt senior Vasquez out there and see what he's got for you here against Chicago State. You Again, you've had the privilege of being here for quite a few Chicago State games this year. So what would you say is that needs to be a strategy for them today? Of course, besides the obvious score a goal. But, you know, with that being said, do you come out and say, okay, let's try to turn some offense in the defense. Let's try to be aggressive really early on. Try some more rotational players. What would you say could be um, a key for them? Uh, this Chicago State uh, team is, is a very physical team, especially in the midfield. You'll see a lot of physical contact, a lot of fouls called on Chicago State, but that's that's by design. It's a okay. very physical team. They're, they're going to force the opposition to have to make five, six, seven crisp mm. passes in a row to break out of their own zone. So you'll see a lot of pressure by Chicago State, and that can lead, especially later in the game, it can lead to mistakes being made when players start to get a little bit more fatigued. It can also, however, lead to some defensive breakdowns if the Cougars aren't positioned correctly, mm. and they tend to fall behind early because of that. But you'll see a lot of pressure. You'll see a lot of physical contact in the midfield from the Cougars today. Crisp, crisp Chicago night here on the south side. Again, Chicago State playing their games at Brooks High School. Or Brooks Prep, I guess you could say. My high school didn't have the word prep in it. My high school had good luck graduating. <laughs> Looking near side, doing some quick defensive work, trying to take it away. Taking their time is Juan Gutierrez out of Waukegan. And I think if you're UIC, you need to understand that, that Chicago State is, is always coming forward. Mm. So it, it's going to be the impetus is going to be on them to remain patient and not try to force the ball forward. If working the ball back to your back line or even as far back as your, your, your goal keep to sort of reset and try to attack the other side of the field and go side to side. That's, that's how you're going to attack a defense like Chicago State that's going to be as aggressive as they are. Well, and again, you, you had the opportunity as well to call an away game uh, for Chicago State. And mm -hmm. something when we look at the schedule, minus the blip of UNO, University of Omaha, uh, or University of Nebraska, Omaha, it's been a very competitive season. Yeah, it has. And, and this is a team that hasn't played a lot of competitive soccer now in their, their fourth, really their fourth third full season. Mm -hmm. Their their first season in program history was 2020, and they only played three games that year. So this is really just their their third full season uh, as, a, as a soccer program. And, and it has, the, there have been a lot of lopsided matches. And this time, for the first time, you're really seeing uh, Chicago State kind of hang with the competition. And not just hang with, but compete with and beat, in some cases, uh, some of the teams they're playing. They, they won two games uh, two years ago, that and one game a year ago, and they're two four and one coming into action here tonight. So, as you said, Pete, a win tonight will set a program record mm -hmm. for victory in a season's for the Cougars, and we're we're not even into October yet. 
Some may say they maybe have some uh, believe signs in the locker room, shades of Ted Lasso. I know I keep a believe sign in my, in my backpack uh, just to help myself pretend I know what I'm doing at the office here every day. But again, Chicago State looking for that lone win. But again, you have to look at it in this way, in an optimistic way, with so many new players to a new program. It, it's not a... It's not the easiest of adjustments to move to one of the biggest cities on earth as well. So that adds a, an element as well when you're recruiting the student athlete. So the fact that they're coming away with goals, some very close opportunities, 1 0 loss against Purdue Fort Wayne over, over at Hefner Soccer Complex. So, you know, good to see the Chicago State program with a, a quicker start than maybe some may have perceived. Yeah, the arrow's pointing in the right direction for the Cougars, and that's kind of really what you're looking for, right? I mean, year three of the program, you're not, in most cases, you're not going to be at a at a level where you are, you know, you're over 500, you're competing for conference championships or NCAA tournaments or that sort of thing. It's, it's all about developing an identity and recruiting players that can fit that identity. And back to the far side, Chicago State. Both teams really playing a lot of, you know, keep away right now. Nobody being the aggressor in either direction. No team registering in a, a UIC of an official shot, not on goal. Yeah, a little just feeling out period here at the beginning. Neither team wants to make an early game mistake. Near sideline now, Martinovsky. He goes back to teammate Brockman. Brockman, the Welver Germany product. One of the stalwarts in the back row for the Flames. He's played almost every minute of every game for UIC this year, so stalwart for sure on that back line. Martinovsky now looking for a lane. Good job chipping it away defensively. Didn't get quite get all the way out of play for Juhas. Good job sticking a toe out there. Be a throw in now for Bjorndal actually hands off to teammate Martinovsky. Donat Mart Juhas, one of those players you just mentioned who's really helped this team form an identity. He's easy to, uh, easy to identify out there, six foot four with the bright pink cleats on. Really easy to see out there. And he's, and he's provided Chicago State with a really kind of nice two-way player, both offensively and defensively in the midfield. A lot of height for this Cougar squad. Yep. Juha stands 6'4". He talked about Danny Sergeyev standing 6'5". So they, they've got some talent. Cal Wayne Allen also 6'4". So when you get some of these set plays in the box, Chicago State a lot of size, and, and that can cause some trouble when, you know, when, you're, when you're, you're, your back line is standing 5'11", 6'1". Rolling still in play, letting that go out of play, smart play. The goal is, I can say the word play five times in a row in a continual sentence. Throw in opportunity now. Martinovsky yet again, he's playing all over the mid. He gets control. Flames trying to find an opportunity here. One official shot, not on goal. Looking to switch near to Farmalan. And this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. You see, uh, you see, uh, uh, Danny Sergeyev right there, it, immediately going after uh, Brockman on the back line, and Brockman the smart move back to Vasquez to sort of restart things. You don't want to, you don't want to take any chances. That one actually ricocheted off of one of the defenders for the Cougars, so crisis averted. In another Missouri Valley game this past weekend, there was an own goal scored. Ooh. That is a, that can't be a good feeling. Luckily enough for that team, yeah, they did find the equalizer with a few minutes left, so that was a 1-1 draw. Own goals, <laughs> those keep you up at night. Fighting through the middle, a bit aggressive from behind. There will be a whistle. It's going to be a foul called on UIC, so free kick for Chicago State. Yeah, Nedich uh, kind of threw the hands up like, wasn't me. Well, might have been. First real opportunity for either team. That'll be Juhas to take that free kick. We'll watch Chicago State tries to crash the net from the far side of the box. This is where that height can come into play. 
So we're 10 minutes into the contest. Still in the sky. Trying to get control of either team. Flames clear out with the left. Now they're trying to turn that defense into offense. Taken away quickly by the Cougars. The speed of Juhas making an impression. Near sideline, out of play. Not able to run it down. I talk, about, Chicago State. talk about Juhas. He made a play down on the defensive end. And right here in midfield, able to steal the ball and turn defense into offense for the Cougars. Chicago State now looking ahead. However, outside to inside. There's a quick chip ahead. Losing his footing, though, is Torres. Kind of threw his hands up as well. But, again, good defense by Chicago State. They stayed put. They stayed out the aggressor on that sequence. And not much Torres could do. He tried to get around. Nowhere to go. And no real physical contact. Just good good uh, fending off. Just mm -hmm. sort of played. It ran interference in front of the UIC uh, ball carrier and kept them off the ball. And that might yield a corner. And I believe it is. So we'll have our first corner of the evening. Again for Aaron, this is Pete. On the Cougar Broadcasting Network. Thank you for joining us this Tuesday evening. Looks to be Jesus Di Vincente, the Casas Bajas player from Spain. With the left toe. Goes far side, headed away by the Cougars. They read that one out. And again, you talked about it, Aaron, with the height of this home Chicago State squad. Yeah, the height works when you're in when you're when you're down in the offensive zone. It also works when you're when you're down in front of your own net, heading that ball out of there. Chicago State making a push near sideline, chips ahead. Nobody there. That one out of play. Kind of raises his hand. He knew. Okay, yeah, I send that. That was Flores. Sent it a bit too far. Yeah, where the Cougars struggle offensively is on these, when, when they're forced to create their own offense mm. through a series of, of passes from the back end to the front end. Again, okay. they're, they're most successful when they're, when they're attacking and they're counterattacking and they're turning that defense into offense. When they can cause you to make a mistake, that's when they're most effective. Where they struggle are in these types of situations where, you're, where they have to be, they have to make... You know, again, those five, six passes in a row to, to, to get something moving forward. Well, I heard that's why they put you on the broadcast with me, so I make the least amount of mistakes possible, <laughs> you know. No comment. No, it's all right. <laughs> Chicago State trying to find something. Spending the majority of the time in the middle third. Staunch defense thus far. Not a lot of opportunities for the visiting Flames. Let's see if they look near sight again. We see setting up once again is Martinovsky. There's the pass to him. They try to do that, that mid to near side swing and try to push it up ahead. And that's really what you need to do when you have, when you have the type of pressure that the Cougars are putting on is work that ball from side to side. Looking for an opportunity now. Chipped ahead, left foot, headed down. Picked up cleanly by Fontana. Not able to get a strong enough header. The opportunity was there, but it just shows you. For those watching at home, first off, thank you for joining us this evening. Raining most of the day. Already an artificial surface. This is going to be a fast-moving ball today. Yeah, it's going to be a slick ball. That header was Bart Munns. Not able to get a ton on it, but tried to go down with it and deflect it past uh, Fontana, but Lucas was right there. Chicago State now. Trying to get in good position, near side, looks back in, still in play, pushes it out, and that's going to, I believe, cause a corner, and it is. So kind of throwing his hands up was Martinovsky, but again, it, it deflected off of him and fell down. Yeah, I think that hands up was more along the lines of, <laughs> uh, what can I do? There was yeah. nothing I could do, trap yeah. back there on the back line. So. so lining up to take a corner now, I believe to be Billy Akumu. Lining up with the right foot. Juhas on the short corner if they want to take the opportunity. They go long range. A player falling, and that's going to go all the way from coast to coast and out of play. Yeah, that was Sergeyev who went down in the box, and that was the intended target. The ball went right past where, where Danny was laying down in the box, top of the box, and harmlessly threw to the other side. 
Just under 30 minutes remaining in the opening half. On the Cougar Broadcasting Network. Two official shots, one on goal for UIC. Again, header not able to be taken advantage of on the offensive side for the Flames. Chicago State had a clean corner. Let's see if the Flames can do something with this. They look at nice poke defensively. Good pitch awareness by Chicago State. And we talked about that early on in this contest already, the defensive awareness. And that's going to be a nudge from behind. Ooh, yeah, it's going to be a dangerous opportunity here for UIC is knocked down right at the top of the box. That was uh, Bill Okumu is going to be whistled for that foul, number eight. And that's right at the top of the box. <laughs> that, was a, that was a foot away from being a PK. Nonetheless, set piece now. And let's see how they set up and line up defensively. Looks like to be just a complete congestion in the middle. Potentially Jesus Di Vincente lining up right now. About a foot outside the line. Again, following the yellow lines on the blue pitch. So Di Vincente taking a few steps back. He is a lefty. Let's see if he lines up for the shot. Brockman, however, lining up with the right as well. About seven players congested, five feet or so in front of Fontana. The left foot, Devin Sente keeps it low, save! Miss handle with the right toe! Bart Munns just missed. What could have been the go-ahead goal from a point-blank situation? Yeah, there were two. UIC Flames standing right there in front of a fallen Lucas Fontana who made a brilliant save on that initial shot. And it was right off the outside of the foot of Bart Munns. And he's got two here in the early going that I think he'd probably like to have back, but none yeah. bigger than that one. He had a wide open goal and, yeah. and just poked it wide of that far post. Well, again, uh, considering the circumstances, you, again, you may not have a better opportunity today with the, the prowess of the defense that Chicago State's been presenting so far this season. So with all those situations being discussed, you had two opportunities, and Bart Munns, again, just, I think he saw, oh, I have wide open spaces in front of me and just went a bit, you know, too far to the left post. And nonetheless... We sit at nil-nil. Yep, first couple real opportunities of the game for UIC, but Chicago State able to sort of take a deep breath here maybe and, and regroup a little bit as that second opportunity off that, off that free kick at the top of the box. Not going to get a better look than that. Trying now to find their own opportunity. Chicago State, again, how many crises or crisis sees. Crises. <laughs> crises. <laughs> Can they avoid? Looking ahead on the spot that time. Good job near side. Juhas all over the pitch this evening. Sends ahead to the left. They got a runner. That's on side. On the ground. Beautiful saving dive. Andres Vasquez. The Central Catholic product saying no. A yeah, great opportunity, just a little bit too much on that pass. That was Dasha Curiel, one of the few young, young uh, uh, Chicago State players, just a freshman. He's shown a lot of skill and a lot of talent here in the early going. Still looking for that first collegiate goal, but you'll, you'll see his name and you'll call his name quite a bit tonight. Number 27 in gray. Looking ahead, going back inside. Bit too much of the fancy footwork by Torres. Beautiful tackle, you see the water spitting up from the damp turf. And it's been raining here pretty much all day, so you, you said it a few minutes ago, a really quick turf, so a lot of those low line drive passes, you might see a little, little maybe put a little bit less on them. Shepard really doing a good job to turn the defense into offense, sent ahead with the left, nobody there. It was Curiel again. He was looking for Sergeyev, top of the box. Just a little too much on that with the left foot. Four shots, two on goal thus far for the, home, for the visiting Flames. Two saves on the docket for Fontana. De Vincente with the one shot, three shots already for Bart Munns. 
Yeah, and one that he'll be dreaming about, <laughs> Pete. You don't, you or nightmares. Or nightmares about, yeah. <laughs> you don't get many wide-open goals like that. And I think there may have been a bit of miscommunication between yep. a couple of Flames who were standing all alone in front of an open net. Yeah. And they both went after it, and it just deflected wide. Throw an opportunity for UIC. Matriculating a bit toward mid. Trying to make a run. Here could be an opportunity. Trying to run it down full speed. Sending it back. Smart play Fontana by Juhas. Yeah, Juhas and Cal Wayne Allen on that back line for Chicago State. Really gives them a couple of big and, and experienced defensemen, which you've talked about their, their defense here in the early going. That's part of the reason they've been successful defensively is because of those two six-foot-four-inch yeah. uh, defensemen. Jaye Shepard once again nearside causing a lot of commotion for this UIC squad. Let's see if that comes to fruition of potentially boiling over and giving advantage to the Cougars. Looking near side, making the run now is Torres yet again. Finds it about a foot before it goes out of the plane in the near side. Making a run, one touch pass to Martinovsky. Martinovsky centering. Taken away once again by Torres. He looks for the goal line. Tips a bit too far, and again, the fancy footwork. Once again, his demise. And yeah, maybe a little too much footwork. Maybe in that instance, again, you talk about not wanting to take chances and, and maybe not push forward. You know, I know you're you're it's tempting being kind of in the box there, yeah. but you're in a position where you're being double teamed right along that back line. Maybe try to find somebody backwards and, and reset, but this is going to lead to a goal kick here for Chicago state. Just like me at a buffet, like having that chance that, you know, the temptation of the second round of desserts, I get it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for the centering. Nobody there running it down defensively. Good pressure a bit by Bart Munns. He's going to be lingering like you said, in the back of his mind, he wants one more chance. That's usually the case when players have missed opportunities. High into the night sky is Vasquez. Again, getting the start over Asher. Asher getting a rest day. Trying to track it down again with the turf. A very unique situation, we'll say. Not only the slickness, but also the uh, added bounce. Just playing on a turf field. That ball will get way up in the air. Mm -hmm. Looking for the throw in is Juhas. A lot of commotion near side. Out of play, throwing his hand up once again is Flores. Wasn't happy with the result, but nonetheless, it did touch off of him. He thought maybe somebody had bounced it into him from behind, but nonetheless, last touch, near side official was on the spot. Eduardo Flores, the captain, looking for the call to go his way, and it went the other way. A shot down wide of that far post, so. UIC doing a nice job of resetting and turning on the offense really quickly, but shot goes wide. Yeah. At least at these facilities, you have, you know, fencing behind, so it's not something that's just going to, you know, run into the street. <laughs> yeah, the ball, it, it doesn't take 45 seconds to reset the play because we're sitting in a, in a it's surrounded by a, a, a track, and you've got the fence right on the other side of the track. play and that will immediately go the way for the Cougars 21 and a half remaining in the opening half for Aaron Schellen Peter Ferrari looking far side now can Chicago State muster their first shot of the evening again played a staunch defensive game strong in the middle can they reach the attacking third with a bit of aggression and passion that we've seen so far on the other ends of the field? Three Cougars surrounding a singular Flames player. Getting a quick jump. Trying to reset, looking mid. Again, there's just the, the, the speed of the ball right now. 
favoring that of the Cougars on this opportunity. Quick pass to the mid. Shepard met by a strong defensive output by the Flames. Shepard overran that one just a little bit, tried to stop and ball kind of got caught up on his left foot and he just overran it. Tipping ahead with the right, looking to send it in and that will just matriculate into a corner opportunity for UIC. Attempted cross, just off that right shoulder of Chicago State. Under 20 now. UIC taking their time to send a player over for the corner, that's for sure. Fitness truly to be tested in conditions like this. Rainy, misty day, evening contest on a weeknight. Most of these players used to training earlier in the day. Header down, and that will result in a goal. Outstanding corner opportunity for UIC as they find the back of the net first and now lead 1-0 against the home Cougars. Yeah, Chicago State just left U uh, UIC Flame all alone in that six and just headed into the back of the net. Got to do a better job of marking those men in the box on that corner and UIC gets another opportunity and this time they're able to put it in. So waiting for the official call on who indeed made contact for UIC and it's going to be number 14 retribution is his Barty Munns. Yeah, he's, that's got to feel pretty good for Munns as he's been the most dynamic player out there offensively so far. Three shots on goal here in the early going and finally able, able to beat Fontana with that third one to give the Flames a 1-0 lead. Well, again, he utilized his speed, his pitch awareness, and was just able to deliver the goal he wished he had moments ago. And Cougars battling from behind, which they've done a lot of this season. I mean, they're, it's, it's maybe not something that, that you want to say, but you're comfortable playing from behind because they do play from behind a lot. That's not going to change their style of defense. They're still going to come at you, still going to attack, and still going to try to force you to make the mistake. In far side now, again, you can expect UIC starting to make that adjustment because, again, UIC right now play, playing on the now second year at Flames Field, brand new facility, brand new pitch, but natural grass. So it's the exact opposite in conditions like this at their home pitch. It would slow the pace of the game down. However, here speeds it up. And not just the ball slowing down, but as a player trying to run back and forth in yep. muddy conditions, you're simply not going to move as fast. So the entire pace of the game, both the ball and the players running around out there, it's just going to be a slower, slower pace. Yeah, that's just me every day. You know, just a slower and slower pace as the days and years go on centering. Nobody on the mark, but far side now. Turning around with the right, finding Torres. Ooh, Torres. Again, another time we can say a Flames player wants that one back. Wasn't able to get the left foot in the line of the pass. Cougars now. That one tipped out of play, thrown once again for Chicago State. Cougars need to be a little careful here, though, as, as UIC has started to tilt the field a little bit down to the right. And you don't want to look up at the end of the first half and be staring at a you know, 3 nothing, 4 nothing game. You want yeah. to keep this thing one nothing. try to get it even before the half. As I said, UI, uh, Chicago State's a much better second-half team than they are a first-half team. It's are they able to go to halftime still in the match yeah. rather than, you know, playing for pride or whatever, going into halftime down 4 nothing. So try to keep this thing one nothing. Do your best to try to get the equalizer, but at worst, going to half down one nothing and, and regroup and, again, come out in the second half with a little bit more and a oomph like they have been. Down, header opportunity again. Oh, that one knocked away as Fontana was looking near side. He couldn't see where the ball went in the sea of blue and gray. But luckily enough, one of his defenders cleared it out with about a 40 yard, you know, clearing attempt. That could have been a two nil goal or two nil situation very quickly. UIC's had some success on those set plays from the near corner, a couple of corner kicks and then that center right there. Uh, UIC's doing a nice job finding the gaps 
in the Chicago State defense in the box and giving themselves some some pretty pretty dangerous opportunities. And Chicago State hasn't been blanked much this year, so the opportunities will arise for this Cougar squad to find the equalizer. They do only have one first half goal this entire season though. Eight second half goals, one in the first half. So again, this is a team that gets better as the game goes on. They've had in in their their win over uh, UAB, they scored two goals in the final about six or seven minutes to come from behind and win that one. Centering, but too far. Getting control, right foot, sending through the goal post. That's three. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. <laughs> Just a little underneath that from the top of the box, trying to get it over the Chicago State defense yeah. and just off the top of that foot and put it up between between the goalposts. Sure. Well, and again, talking about these conditions as well, when you're used to a natural surface, you're used to having to get a little bit more underneath yep. it, where right now you going underneath it's going to sail it, you know, like, you, like we saw there through the uprights. Right, here on the turf, the ball is sitting on top of the turf, whereas on a grass field, it's kind of sitting yep. down in the grass a little bit. So more like a golf shot having to get underneath it. Making the run far side. UIC trying to display their speed. Outside. Nice job poking it away. It will be a throw-in for UIC, but nonetheless, great defensive awareness for the home Cougars. Cougars doing a nice job keeping UIC on the outside on this possession, not letting them get near the box. And just good man-on-man -man defense to poke the ball away. UIC trying to find their second goal. Passing far side, left foot, keeps it low. Chipped up in the air, and that will be another corner a for UIC. And that was a low centering attempt by UIC, and that tends to be the result if, as, as defensively you just want to get that foot down and... Knock it out of bounds and cross the end line. So now UIC with a corner kick from the other end. We haven't seen one from this side yet. Lining up with the right boot. 14 and a half remaining in the opening half. Far side. And that's going to be offsides marked for the home flames. In the games you've called this year, Aaron, in terms of the second half, what has, has it been adjustments made by Chicago State or is it just they've had to play the aggressor and have, you know? I mean, I think, I think they've had to play the aggressor a little bit because they've been playing from behind in a lot of these matches. Okay. But I also think it's a, a, a fairly well-conditioned team. And uh, as I've said a couple of times, they play a very physical and aggressive style of defense and that can wear down the opposition if you're not ready for it and and that's what we've seen in a couple of the Chicago State victories is they just sort of wore down the opposition and that's kind of how they look to play is they they look to say we're we're just better conditioned than you we're going to be able to run around more than you and later in the game you're going to make mistakes because of it quite a few international players for both of these squads, but you know, for Chicago State, player from Hungary, player from Togo, Uruguay, Kenya, two Jamaicans, a Tobago player, another Kenyan. Yeah, and that's what you're gonna see with a team that's that's just building yeah. its its program. You're gonna get a lot of transfers from from community colleges and you know, players that, that, you know, have a year of eligibility left and they're looking to, to get one more year in. So you're yeah. going to see kind of that, that eclectic mix of, of different regions and nations and, and styles of play. And that, that can be tough to try to sort of meld together over the course of a year if you've got players from, from all sorts of different, different walks of, of, sure. of life and, strat and, and different styles of play. It can be hard to, to get them to mesh in a, in early in, in a yeah. season. A lot, of, a lot of, quite a few players from the greater Rockford area. Also, Leon from sunny Elgin, Illinois. Chicago State finally make a run. See the speed on the near side. Trying to track it down. Does so in time. 
Looking outside and inside. The pass is there. Has the opportunity. Will they decide to go long range with any attempt? Trying for a turnaround opportunity. Right foot, and that one just goes past. Vasquez on the far post. Ajaya Shepard, I think, had an opportunity to take a shot there. He, he created some space for himself. A little fake pass down the left wing. Cut back into the middle. And I think he had more time and more space than he thought he had. And instead of turning and trying to fire, he made the pass. And it wasn't a bad run by Chicago State there, but the shot ended up going wide of that far post. First true set of substitutions happening. So teams going roughly 35 minutes into the contest before trying to switch things up a bit. Ever since that first goal, however, in that near second, past 12 plus minutes have very much favored Chicago State. Well, they're doing a nice job maintaining possession. And as we say that, here comes UIC. Good job with the box out to yield yet another corner for the Flames. This is going to be the fourth corner kick for UIC. And you're right, that was, that was a great box out to just let that ball roll across the end line and give yourself an opportunity. And from this near corner is where USC has, has had their success on these set plays so far tonight. Clock continues to matriculate down again. As we've seen with most of the corners this evening, UIC is content to take as much time as needed. Well, especially now with a lead, you, know, you can be a little more patient. Punched out nicely by Fontana there. And yeah, Fontana's been playing a, a very strong game in the net. Yeah, he's faced a lot of shots this year. Over 80 shots in just seven games. Centering pass for nobody there. You know, that's an opportunity if you look at Chicago State. You know, you, you want to try to take that quick look. If you don't see anybody, slow down the pace. Let your teammates get up to the attacking third. UIC now looking for a centering opportunity. Dive and a nice save once again by Fontana. And yeah, the Cougars don't do anything slow. Yeah. And that, that can sometimes come back to burn them. But they are a... They are a, a fast team. They want to play fast offensively and defensively. Sometimes they get a little bit out of control when they do that, but it's also le led to some, some pretty highlight goals and some, some better-than-expected offense from the Cougars this year as well. Chicago State trying to find an outlet, still looking for their first official shot today. Can they find it here? Again, at some point, you say to yourself, okay, we're just going to go for some long-range missiles just to try to make sure we don't catch Vasquez sleeping. I, that's not really their game. They don't okay. really play, you know, that, that long ball. It's, it's more, more of these, these short, quick passes. And again, when, when, you're, when you're, your primary offensive strategy is, is via counterattack, in theory, you shouldn't have to play too many long balls because the hope right is that you're going to steal mm -hmm. the ball away in midfield and you're going to be able to turn that yep. defense into offense um you know they they play a lot of you know those those i don't want to say the 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 long you know you're talking 10 15 yard passes and try to try to you know maybe play a ball where, where your one of your forwards can run onto it uh or you know again those set plays with 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 the six four cal wayne allen and the six five danny sergeyev in the box and try to just get one up there to your big guys UIC sitting 5-1-1 one, and one overall, 1-0 one and oh in the Missouri Valley. 3-1-1 one and one in its last five matches. We talked about that victory over Belmont, which the Cougars themselves have played in a non-conference game, which yielded a 1-1 one, one draw. That was on September the 3rd in Alabama. Did you travel for that one, too? I did not. Oh, okay. I did not go to Alabama for that one. Well, wasn't sure they, uh, how far they send you? No. no, no. <laughs> they don't really say, they, they send me here. Okay. <laughs> it's been a fun team to watch. You know, yeah. it's, it's you know, again, just their, their 
really their third season uh, as as a program and you see the development in, in some of the players this is Danny Sergeyev's second year Cal Wayne Allen you know it's some of these guys that, that that are now considered leaders of of the program it's it's nice to see them get some success before sure. they move on to you know whatever their their post collegiate opportunities are Left foot down, trying to clear it near side. Successfully done by the Flames. However, Chicago State now spending a bit more time in that attacking third as discussed. Throw an opportunity. Yeah, that was Donut Juhas again with that left foot into the back. Good deep into the box. Good defense by UIC to clear it out. But yeah, Chicago State a little bit more possession here. Nice job inward. Hits the side of the net. But good challenge that time by the Cougars. Starting to put a bit more pressure on the defense of UIC. That was Juhas again on the shot. And he's easy to tell. We just find those, <laughs> find yeah. those pink cleats, and, and, and it's easy to tell where he is. But yeah, off the side of the net, tried to go short side on Vasquez, but just into the side of the net. Your side now for UIC. Retreating back, Brockman. Ooh. Almost yeah. a sliding takeaway by Sergeyev there. Yeah, good effort. I mean, that's what you want to see right now if you're part of the Cougars faithful is a bit more aggression on the offensive side with five and a half remaining in the opening half. Trying to track that down, and that will be a goal kick. And that's what they'll do. You'll see UIC. You'll see their forwards putting pressure on the opposing goalkeeper when that goalkeeper has that ball down on the ground and he's, he's dribbling. You'll see UIC or you'll see Chicago State come right at the goalie. So they they are aggressive. Uh, they are an aggressive defense that that is saying, you know, if you're going to beat us, mm -hmm. you're going to have to play around us, and you're going to have to play pretty perfectly or we're just going to take the ball away from you. Yeah, Cougars have done a much better job with the heading opportunities than the Flames so far. So another, you know, notch in the hat for them. Passing far side. Here comes the speed of the Flames. Can the defense stand tall? Left foot down, goes back to the Flames, centering, trying to get possession. Right foot into the air on a bicycle opportunity. UIC now. Pass on the near side if they want it, decide to retreat. Almost back to the center circle to reset up their attack. Good job getting a toe in the lane as the Cougars. And this is what they want. We talk about defense into offense and that pass a little too far ahead of the Chicago State runner but but that's how the that's how the Cougars want to play they want to take the ball away and immediately turn and go the other direction they don't they don't wait they don't take the ball away and then wait for their their mids and their and their forwards to to move down the field they're attacking right away under four remaining now can the home Chicago State Cougars find the equalizer in the opening half, or will they go into half down 1-0? Again, playing much the aggressor in the last 10-plus minutes. That one out of play. Chicago State maintains possession. Well, teams haven't had any memorable throw-ins. Let's see if this one yields any positive results. On the pitch, in the air, missed on the header, trying to run it down. UIC has an opportunity to turn defense into offense. Passing ahead, Torres, that one's gonna matriculate back to Fontana. Pro State now. Just a deflection. Near side now for Juhas. Juhas pushing it ahead. Goes with the left, tries to center it, but again, it was in between two teammates of Cougars. Yeah, he was looking for Sergeyev there, and again, Juhas had more time and space. He could have taken another three, four dribbles forward and maybe got himself a little bit deeper. Barty Munns. Teammate let it go, but it went a bit too far. There will be a whistle. Could say a smart play to just slow down the attack of Chicago State right now. They have been pressing. Yeah, the Cougars have done a nice job here over the last handful of a handful of minutes controlling the possession. And you know, they've they've had the better of the play here in the last last ten or so. 
Trying to send it away, right foot down. But that one will head off into the distance. Vasquez doesn't have to make an effort. Under two minutes remain. Yeah, the Cougars trying to, and that ball up in the air, just sort of a one-timer, and put wide of the far post. UIC now content with taking as much time as needed to run out the opening half. And this is a smart way, I think, to, to attack the Chicago State defense is to be patient. You know, the, the Chicago State's going to be coming at you, so wait for them to make a mistake. Wait for their defense to crack and then find that gap. Footwork toward the end line. That's going to be a nudge from behind. And they are going to not call that. That will be a goal kick. So UIC, not happy about that at all, but nonetheless, the result favors the Cougars. Little bit of contact. <laughs> If someone's running forward, it doesn't take a doesn't take a very significant nudge to knock them down from behind. No call there, though. I appreciate the no call. Let them play unless it's something significant. Oh, I'm a I'm a firm proponent in letting them play. I I I, I believe in the the no blood no foul rule. <laughs> let them play. And even if there's blood, if it's not a lot of blood, yeah. continue to let them play. Looking for one of the final opportunities now is Moreno. Moreno tries to go between three defenders under 30 seconds. I tried a little nutmeg pass there <laughs> through the legs of a Chicago State defender, but the, the wing on the right side continued down the field rather than cutting towards the net. So a bit of miscommunication on that pass and ends up as a harmless goal kick. So it looks like Fontana's content with just ending things here to send it in the Chicago night sky. As we are down to three to two to one. And at half, the home Cougars trail the visiting flames of UIC one nil. Aaron, thoughts before we go into half? Well, I mean, I think we've we've touched on on you know most of the important points here in the first half. Chicago State done a nice job the final 10 or 12 minutes kind of controlling the offensive possession and, and, and keeping this thing within reach as we go to the second half against a probably a little bit more talented UIC team, but it's not always about the talent. Sure. All right, we'll take a timeout when we come back. Second half action again, OVC versus Missouri Valley Conference. Flames lead 1-0 against the home Cougars. For Aaron Schell and I'm Peter Freire, we'll be right back on the Cougar Broadcasting Network.
Welcome back to the Cougar Broadcasting Network. Alongside my broadcast colleague this evening, Aaron Schellen, I'm Peter Ferrari. Aaron, it, it was a first half that favored the visiting Flames here at Brooks Prep on the south side. However, Chicago State showed a lot of life at the end of that first half. Yeah, I mean, it favored UIC on the scoreboard. Bart Munns finally breaking through after a couple of point-blank opportunities to give the Flames a one nothing lead. But really, the last 10 or 12 minutes was mostly controlled by the Chicago State Cougars possession-wise. Uh, nothing really too dangerous in close on net, but you like seeing that, especially yeah. when, when, when they gave up that, that goal with about 15 minutes left to UIC. And things were looking a little shaky. UIC <laughs> was starting to put some pressure on and threatening to make it 2 nothing. But Cougars did a nice job sort of hunkering down defensively and, and making sure that they went into halftime down only by that one. Teams have switched sides again. Vasquez getting a little bit of a test near the end. Let's see if the Cougars can put more on goal. Again, you've been here. You've called this team. You know they're more of a second-half team. Yeah, again, and it's just because of the style of, of, of play that they have. It's a very aggressive style, both offensively and defensively. They, uh, As I said, they, they don't like to go slow, you know, kind of like Ricky Bobby. You know, it's <laughs> always going fast, and, and, and that can lead to some second-half mistakes if you're not locked in as the opposition. On the near side, we'll get to an update for the volleyball match in just a moment after this opportunity. Potentially UIC centering, keeping it alive, knocking out a play with the left foot. So update for our volleyball program. Yeah, the women's volleyball team currently right now in a barn burner. Fifth set, 2-2 two -two in that fifth set, 3 nothing. Cougars with the lead in set number five. So you can kind of dual, dual feed, put... put us on, on, on one screen, <laughs> but the volleyball match on the other. And there you go. One on a phone, there one you go. on a tablet. Right. Chicago State, ball back on the foot of Lucas Fontana. He waits for his lines to move forward. Puts the right foot into it. Trying to head it back down on the near side. That'd be a foul called on the Cougars. <laughs> UIC now again. Taking a slower pace as they look near side. Making a run is Torres. Out of play and will yield. I think it'll just be a throw in down on the. Should be a throw in down on the left side. Neither team doing more, or I should say, neither team being aggressive on the throw ins so far. Mostly playing short. Looking back to right, to left. Out of play. That was a nice give and go yeah. right, off, right off the throw in, but more good defense by Chicago State, but. I think we're going to have a corner kick here now for UIC. So another corner for the Flames. Make that their potentially seventh on the evening so far. The left foot looking far side. Still in the air. Ricocheting. And that'll be another throw in. So that was just playing pinball wizard. Around the midsections of a lot of Cougar players until it deflected out of play. UIC. A little bit of pressure here. Nothing terribly dangerous down low, but you get enough of these set plays and eventually you'll cash in. Defensante. Along the mid, in the air, hits the post and goal! I talk None other, another for Paul Brockman. Yeah, talked about you get enough of these set plays and eventually you'll cash in. And 
UIC's had a number of these corner kicks and they cash in right here. They're second of the game. Yeah, my goodness, the opportunity. First off, shout out, it was an outstanding centering pass, but on the spot was Brockman took full advantage of that. Also, intriguing defensive play by Fontana. Didn't really go for it. I thought you know, maybe he thought it was going to go so far out of play that he didn't make an effort toward it. It hit the post and bounced in. Yeah, you're almost always taught as a as a, a goalie to to be aggressive on that ball. You're the only one that's allowed to use your hands, so take advantage of it and attack that ball. And Fontana didn't attack the ball there and ends up in the back of the net. So just like that, the home Cougars find themselves in a 2-0 hole less than five minutes in the second half. You talked about how well Chicago State played in that final 10 to 12 minutes of the first half to come out here within the first couple of minutes of the second half and concede that second goal has got to be a little frustrating. Assist credited to Jesus Di Vincente again with a beautiful pass. Not only was Fontana not necessarily going for it, a lot of the Cougar players just kind of flat footed. I, I don't know what the methodology was per se, but nonetheless, 2 0, they got a. This is an uphill battle. And there's a bad pass by Chicago State, allowing UIC to attack again. Turning things around is Tercios. Tercios did get the start today for UIC. Looking near side. Once again, De Vincente had the beautiful crisp pass that resulted in the second goal for UIC. Far side now for Brockman, who had the header. Again, when your defender can come up and make such an aggressive play, that just shows the well-roundedness of this Flames squad this season. Yeah, you'll see a lot of, you know, these players where a lot of these teams where, where that, that center mid is kind of one of your best overall players yeah. and, and your offense almost always goes through a player like that. But it's also sort of the new, the new wave kind of fullback, right? Yeah. Somebody who, who you know, is, is going to be strong defensively but, but can also kind of help you create down in the offensive end, and we saw it there from Brockman for sure. And, and on the other side, Chicago State number 12, Kyle Wayne Allen. We haven't said his name a whole lot here today, yeah. but he's another one very similar who uh, the Chicago State offense kind of starts with number 12 in gray, but he also is one of the few play, one of two players on the team who has more than one goal on the season, yeah. so he can get it done in both ends as well. Player to look out for is Odiambo. Has been all over the pitch today. Hasn't netted any positive results. Let's see if he becomes a bit more the aggressor now with that 2-0 deficit. Hillary Odiambo, number 17 for Chicago State. He's one of those players with a ton of speed. There he is right there trying to catch the goalie off guard. But He heard us talking about him. He did. He heard us <laughs> talking about him. Tried to tried a highlight reel goal from about 40 yards outside of, uh, outside of the net. And... That ball twisted. He, yeah. You know what he was trying to do? Get it up in the air sure. over the head of Vasquez, but just didn't get enough underneath it. I am not opposed to opportunities like that. Last, It was last fall. I uh, saw Marquette University men's program in a 1-1 deadlock. Three minutes remaining in the contest. Did that very play, chipped it right over. Goalie couldn't get back in time. Came away with a victory. So I have seen it with my own, you know, LASIKed eyes. It, it, it can work. It can work. And... Not a bad play by by Odiambo, given that he was going to be one on three, trying mm -hmm. to come down and uh, attack attack on his own. Like to see the Cougars continue to apply the pressure because again, you're at the point where, albeit you're at a deficit, now is where you got to put the pressure on because. You know, non-conference game, what's a game, what's the difference between a 2-0 and a 3-0 loss? Right, and, and if you're Chicago State, and we've talked about this, this yeah. is about building a program, building an identity, building, you know, building, again, building an identity. And for Chicago State, that identity is attack and move yeah. forward. And you may as well keep doing that. Again, as you said, that, that looked like a handball, no call. But as you said, why not? You know, what's, yep. again, what's the difference between a 2 nothing loss and a 4 nothing loss? You may as well keep attacking, keep mm -hmm. playing your game and trying to execute your game plan because that's how you get better is, yeah. is by just continuing to work on your game plan. 
Nice job by Vasquez to pick up the pieces. Looking at the upcoming schedule for Chicago State, Liberty in Virginia, September the 28th, before they're back home against University of the Incarnate Word, October the 1st, and then October the 5th, just a few days later, once again, taking on Liberty as a home contest as well. Yeah, the Ohio Valley Conference, first year conference for Chicago State. They were an independent team a year ago after mm -hmm. spending 2021 in the WAC. So in the newly formed OVC, so first conference action coming up. And, you know, that's really where you'll start to see yeah. kind of these um, – your your substitution rotations tightened up a little bit. Sure. And, you know, you, you have your starters, you've got your two or three subs that are going to be coming in, and that'll really be it, right? You'll have your, your handful of players, and you won't be you won't go quite as deep into that bench once you get into conference play. Yeah. You know, one thing Coach Phillips said uh, when I spoke to him prior to their season, UIC looks for, you know, usually the starting nine and they have one or two positions every game. They look to say, okay, maybe we're going to tweak that a little bit, tweak that a little bit. He goes, I always want an open competition, at least at some part. He goes, so whether it's the forwards, the defense, the mids, somebody's at a competition for their position each and every game. Yeah, and that's what the non-conference games are for, right? Yeah. Is is to 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 allow kind of those 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 open competitions to flush out and who's going to take those roles. That one way out of play. A yeah, good slide tackle by UIC there. Last time these two teams met was just over a year ago, September the 9th of 2022, with a 2 0 victory. The Flames at Flames Field in their first year in the Missouri Valley for them. So, again, this is only their second year in their new conference, formerly of the Horizon League, where Purdue Fort Wayne was. So, you know, it was always it, the, the yes. rivalries and the changing of conferences. All the topics, all the time. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of conference moving, and you know, con conference changes isn't just for a big time Division One college football. Sure. It happens, happens all over the place. Yeah, so UIC used to be part of the Horizon League. Now they're they've moved on, and other teams have moved yep. in, yep. and that's just sort of how it works. Well, and when you have, um, excuse me, when you have conferences, we'll get to that in just a moment. Chicago State quickly takes possession. Conferences like the Missouri Valley, the Ohio Valley, Horizon, they consider themselves high mid-major conferences. And so, right. you know, t speaking with these coaches across the plethora of sports, you know, there's your quote-unquote stereotypical mid-major. But when you have programs like, you know, a UIC and Chicago State and other sports that can not only compete but can defeat – power five conferences they said yes on paper we're not a power five but we consider ourselves high mid-major in order to be able to do such things yeah and you see you know if you look at the top 25 for men's mm -hmm. d1 soccer you yeah. see you know it's not always about north carolina or yeah. yukon or you know you see a lot of mid-major mm -hmm. type schools in that top 25 i was i thought you were gonna say yukon or maybe you know the the uh, new england area schools based on your well, home familiarity. Based, based on my home familiarity, <laughs> I my, the, my, my actual my alma mater is actually a top twenty five Division one soccer program, the University of New Hampshire. Okay, there you go. So they, they've actually got a, a very very good men's soccer team. So it just goes to show it's you know especially when you're talking soccer, it's not always about the largest the 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 biggest named mm -hmm. programs. It's about about programs that that can build an identity and build consistency and yeah. and and you know that's what Chicago State is working towards it's you know you, you can't talk about consistency when you've only been around for 3 seasons sure. you know you you have to start somewhere you have to start with the the young recruiting classes and and build with those freshmen and those sophomores and those those you know red shirt transfers and 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 that's how you build a program yeah currently speaking UIC receiving votes at number 25 last week, not ranked. And there indeed, as you pointed out for me, thank you for that. New Hampshire at number 18. Yeah, I got to give a shout out to the Wildcats. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because you, you think, you know, big time D1 sports and, and you think the, the staples, right? Yeah. Whether it's 
Texas or Alabama or North Carolina mm-hmm. or Duke or Michigan. Yeah. Or, and that's not always the case. It's Correct. not always the case. You see these mid-major teams all the time, not only competing, but winning yeah. and, and finding their way into the NCAA tournament and, and winning games there. And so it's, it's one, of the, one of the great things about, about college sports is yeah. that you know, it's not always David versus Goliath. Sometimes mm-hmm. those, those mid-major teams are as good, if not better, yeah. than some of the teams in the Power Five. They just don't get quite as much recognition or notoriety because they, they aren't a campus of you know, 50,000 students or sure. 40,000 students. Well, speaking of Marquette, we talked about them. They're ranked number 23 right now. So making a push uh, just a bit north of here. Right now, Marshall, number one, West Virginia, two, UCF, three, Akron, four, and Portland, five. So, Well, there you go. Marshall, thundering herd, sitting as the top D1 men's soccer program in the country. So we talk about mid-majors. There you go. Top team in the country. Sadly, my alma mater not receiving votes this year so far, but that's okay. That's okay. They'll find their way. My alma mater uh, being Creighton. Uh, when, the but owls. When, I, when I went uh, close, uh, the Blue Jays. Blue Jays. Was it Owls Temple? Temple. Yes. Yeah. Um, but when I went to Creighton, they were still part of the Missouri Valley. So now in the Big East, the new Big East. Again, we just we could talk conferences right. all day. Clearly. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. It's 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 a constant, constantly changing. Enrique Zamora, the junior, just checking in for Chicago State. Coming in for Donat Juhas. Finally gets a breather. 30 minutes and change remaining in the contest. 2-0 lead for the visiting Flames. Both campuses being very close to the 90-94 exchange. So probably just hopped on the highway and headed south. Let's see what Chicago State can do. That's how I got here. <laughs> As stated, I took I took side I was able to just take side streets here. Not sure about our technical director and producer, extraordinaire Chris Rouse. Not sure if he took a side street. No, or Chris not. walked. He lived. He, walked. He, he lives like <laughs> like two blocks from here. So, <laughs> Chris walked. Okay. Could I mean I did see two of those uh, you know, scooters while pulling into the high school. He could have rented one of those scooters. He could have. Just yeah, to I get think he little... had to bring the gear with him though. So oh, okay. Probably probably wasn't able to fit all that on the on on the scooter. Got it. This has been a nice, again, a, a nice kind of answer by Chicago State yeah. here. They haven't been able to Very get on the so. board here, but just like we saw in the first half, they gave up the goal to UIC and then immediately started playing a little bit more aggressively with a little bit more pace. And we're seeing it here again. Here's an opportunity for Chicago State. Trying to turn it around. Again, another opportunity to go long range. On the ground, chipped oh. up. Oh, a oh. save oh. and a beauty. Andres Vasquez says, no, thank you. Come again. Trying to get the number on that. I believe that was number nine, Jai Shepard, on that shot. Hard to tell from where we are, but, man, that was the best opportunity of the night for Chicago State. Two gray jerseys all alone in front of the net, and Andres Vasquez hasn't been called upon much, but that's the save of the night here for either side. Near side hits the post and goal! The Cougars with in one, clapping it up and bringing it to the near side. None other. It's Danny Garcia. We there talk, he is. Or excuse me, uh, uh, Danny Sergeyev. We talked about that height. He got into the got into that 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 six area and just headed the ball into the back of the net. So for Garcia, that's his third goal of the year. And we talked about how Chicago State had a nice uh, had a nice answer after that UIC goal. We've also talked about how Chicago State's a second half team. Yeah. Uh, they got to get another one here as they give up that early goal, but they're right back in this one now, down two one. Danny Sergeyev, again, as stated, that opportunity. I don't want to say Vasquez maybe was rattled, but I think after that first illustrious save Vasquez had, maybe mentally you say, well, they're not going to do it again. They're not going to get another, <laughs> they're not going to get another opportunity so that close. quickly. Yeah. yeah, almost a rinse and repeat. So whole new ball game in this just a hair into the 63rd minute. Sergeyev. 
Offsides called here on UIC. And this is when Chicago State gets it done, is in these late minutes, the 65th plus. We've seen multiple goals in the final, you know, in the final 10, 12 minutes of a game. And Chicago State's going to need another finish yeah. like that. But so far, so good for the Cougars. That was a, a really, really nice answer to what UIC came out with here at the beginning of the second half. And even being a non-conference game, you could tell UIC starting to feel the pressure a bit defensively as that whistle will favor that of the Cougars. Yeah, and it's all about, um, it's all about I don't want to say big-time victories, but signature victories for Chicago State. They want to be able to put these wins sort of on their, on their resume, right? Yep. You know, it's, it's a team that, that's, that's just in their, their technically their fourth season of existence, really only their third since they only played three games in 2020. Every win over a, another D1 program is sort of one of those things you can kind of check off and again put on your resume wins yeah. over over Milwaukee and UAB already this season they can add UIC to that list a team that came into action today 5-1-1 one, and one. that looks really really good on your kind of on your ledger going into mm -hmm. postseason play and again that if they're able to come back and pull this one out it would be their third victory which would be the most they've ever had in a season so yeah we talk about trending in the right direction Chicago State the Cougars they are trending in the right direction yeah fun fact though this is actually technically the fourth time total these two teams have met they first met September the 10th 1986 uh, but there was over a three-decade hiatus for Chicago State having a squad. So UIC does lead that series 4-0 overall over all time. But three decades uh, longer than any of these players have been alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, you can't really, can't really uh, talk much yeah. about what happened three decades ago and have it be relevant to today. But you know, Chicago State definitely yeah. wants that first win. You know, UIC is a team that they play every year yep. in, in non-conference, and so it can turn into one of those rivalry-type matchups. And here comes a great opportunity for the Flames now. Ooh, mishandled. Can they turn it around? Near side, Torres poked away. Yeah, if you're the Flames, you want to be able to capitalize. That was a clean two-on-one break-in. Making a run ahead. We talked about the prowess. That's Odiambo down there, down low with the ball. Odiambo looking near side now. Back to Odiambo. Can he make a move to turn it around? I'm going to say that ball rolled out of bounds. But yeah, that was a clean two on one break yep. for UIC. And you know, that's one that the, the pass behind the intended target, you have to come up with at least a shot there on a two-on-one two on like that. You don't get very many odd man rushes like that in, in, uh, in a soccer match. And you, when you get them, you need to take advantage of them. Trying to make a run now to extend the lead back to a two-goal deficit. Bart Munns, he has been all over the offense sporadically, but when he's had his runs, it's been most effective. Yeah, he had about a 12-minute rush there where he had three shots on goal. Another tough opportunity. Yeah, Scott. Cougars a little bit too, oh, a little too unselfish yeah. there. An opportunity to take a shot. We've seen that a couple of times. We saw it in the first half too, with Donat Juhas who kind of walked down the far down to, down to our left. He, he created some space for himself and decided to pass it instead of shoot. And we saw it again there. And Chicago State needs to be a little more selfish, I think, when they get down in the box. You get those, when you're in the box, if you've got space, go ahead and put it on goal. And thank you for joining us. 23.45 remaining. Can Chicago State find the equalizer in one of the final non-conference games for both of these squads this season? Back far side, Juha sends that out of play. Was it tipped is going to be the question. It was, yeah, it once again, like a corner. Yeah, and that's not a bad play from Juha, as he's down in the corner, no really, nowhere to really go with it. So just kind of put the ball towards the net, and it deflected off of a, off of a flame across the end line. So this will be a, 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 an opportunity here for the Cougars on a corner kick. Two defenders lining up. Toward the mid, down, oh. and just a bit far. Very 
very close once again, Aaron. Yeah, nice, nice play for Chicago State there. The header just wide of that near post. We were about a foot and a half away from a tie game. In far sideline now. Flames desperately trying to get a little bit of momentum. Let's see if that whistle can give them that. Yeah, you would have thought that once they picked up that early yeah. second period goal that they would kind of have that that mojo right here to mm -hmm. just sort of keep the foot on the accelerator and you know maybe get another one and just yeah. put put this Chicago State team away. But it's just not how the Cougars operate. They just keep coming at you. And they will cause you to eventually make a mistake. Yeah. And, and we've seen it already once here in the second half. And really, they've played the better They've played the better soccer here, really not just in the second half, but really since about the Correct. 12 to 15 minute mark of the first half, the Cougars have outplayed the Flames. Even Sente challenged hard at the near side. Whistle's going to favor the Flames. Going to be a foul on Odiambo for knocking DiVincente Di down. DiVincente now out of Casabaja, Spain. Was a Iowa Western Community College product, along with teammate Diego Quintana and teammate Oscar Gruhen. It's got to be a good feeling if you're Iowa Western Community College to send so many players, as well as Luka Nedic, to a D1 to a program, D1 yeah. level, and all have them be contributors, or have key contributors from each person. Yeah, absolutely. Chicago State now retreating back to Fontana. Temperatures starting to drop a bit out on the pitch. Players trying to stay warm. Looking to sub in soon is going to be Radvanovic. As well as Gruhin, who we just discussed. Trying to find an opportunity. And one of the first times this year we've had to utter the phrase trying to stay warm. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a hot summer here in Chicago, but yeah, temperatures down to the low 60s now. So yeah. if you're, you've been sitting on that bench now for the last hour and 20 minutes or so, it can get a little chilly down there. But of course, tomorrow it's going to pick up and be 80 degrees again. So I'm, I'm fine with that. I am totally fine with that. Yeah, Nice 80 and then it'll drop to uh, 62 for the overnight high. It's like I'm a weather reporter now. Aren't we all? <laughs> Nothing against weathermen, but name another job where you could be wrong 50% of the time and be able to keep your job. Sure. Well, I mean, that's why I'm here today, but, you know. Yeah, but you're not wrong about what you I mean. You're, you're just saying what you're seeing out here yeah. on the field. You're not wrong about that. It would be like if you said it was 2-1 Cougars right now, and you said that sure. 12 times during the game, and everybody was fine with it. 64 degrees and cloudy is the official report. Thank you, Chris Rouse, our executive producer for the game, to provide that. Multi-talented Chris Rouse. Oh, what can it's he also do? Also a meteorologist. What can he do? Left foot down. Oh, save! Still in the sea of feet. Who can clear it away? And here comes Odiambo. Odiambo take it away. Left foot clearing for Chicago State. Oh, so close. For UIC. Yeah, Flames almost retook that two goal lead, but Fontana positioned correctly, positioned well, and able to punch it out. It just shows, as you've stated time and time again, it albeit a new program, albeit new teammates to each other, what, it really is like the second half of this game and the conclusion of the first, it's a completely different squad than the one that started this evening. Yeah, like I said, they just they keep attacking, they keep coming after you, and 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 their assumption is that you're not going to be able to play a perfect 90 minutes of soccer, and that if if we continue to press and we continue to put pressure on you, that you're going to crack before you're able to find a crack in our defense. And for the most part, that's been the case tonight. Yeah. You know, a couple of set plays from the corner for UIC have have allowed them to take the lead. But when you're talking non-set type plays, yeah. Cougars have had the better of it. See what UIC can do now with 
1820 remaining in the contest. Holding so desperately onto a 2-1 lead non-conference action. UIC for those following the Flames back in action this weekend. The 23rd against Drake. And then back at home the 30th to close out the month against Western Michigan. They then on the 4th of October have another non-conference game against DePaul. Coach told me last week, another Missouri Valley coach, they said, name a sport which feels that it goes faster than college soccer. Not the pace of play, but just the season as a whole, you know, because it's already started around the time. We'll get to that in a moment. Headed in the air. That's going to be offsides, but in terms of you know, you just start the season mid-August, and then by October, it's already the postseason. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a quick season, and yeah. and and the pace of play is quick too. I yeah. mean, you know, you, you look up, and you know, we're at, at 17 minutes left in this game. We've we've been playing for for 73 minutes already, and it goes by pretty quickly. It's you know, it's one of the few sports where where you can get there and, and you know what time yeah. it starts and you can pretty much assume what time it's going to end <laughs> yeah. too, just, just based on the way the game plays. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun sport to watch and we've seen some good action tonight, you know, yeah. two teams, you know, playing the, the, the end of their, of their non-conference schedule. And it's, uh, it's, it's been a fun one. Yeah. And not to mention, this is the second season now uh, in its entirety of which no overtime, no golden goal, until you get to the postseason. And so it's really had to stylistically change the, the sport as a whole because you had teams, and, and again, not to get into what might happen here, non-conference game, a, you know, some may say a friendly, but it's positioning. You know, if you are Chicago State, we just stated UIC's 25th team right now ranked. And so if you can come away with such a close loss or – we do have a play on the ground right now, so we'll get more information as that comes in for the Cougars. But with that being said, if you have no overtime, draws are so much more important now. And you're going to have such a larger volume of those. If you can have a draw against a higher-ranked opponent, mm -hmm. it's almost like getting a win in it's a al It's senses. almost like a win, yeah. I mean, you're... So taking a look now, it's going to be Zamora out of Yuma, Arizona, slow to get off the pitch for the home Cougars. And we do have a stoppage of play here, one of the, the few times you'll get a stoppage with, a, with an injury. But, yeah, you're right. You, you'll find teams playing maybe a little bit more, a little bit safer down the stretch if it's, if it's a tie game, especially let's say Chicago State's able to tie this up in the next, you know, 10 or 12 minutes you probably play a pretty conservative style of soccer sure. that four final four or five minutes because it, again like you said if you can walk out of here with a tie against you know a top 30 team in 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 the ncaa that's that's important that's huge so clock is waiting to get started again 16 20 aaron shelm peter ferrari thank you for joining us on this tuesday evening non-conference play. It's always good to get a nice early week matchup. Get one under the belt for the week. And get one as your week gets started. Yep. Us as broadcasters get the pipes warmed up, you that's know, right. after a little bit of a break of yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, you, you get the one day off. In your head. Can Chicago State find the equalizer? Here could be that opportunity. Passing has been much, much crisper. They put a lot of chances at the goal. There's that long range left foot, but a bit too high. That was Sergeyev with that big left foot. He'll shoot it from anywhere. He was about 12 yards outside of the box with that left foot and put it well over the crossbar. But again, those shots from a distance, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. Maybe they catch a foot on the way in yeah. or... You know, maybe you catch it perfectly and it ends up in that corner. Has Coach Howes ever asked you to, you know, do some training with him? Oh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't run around anymore. Okay, so that's <laughs> uh, the, those days are those days have come and gone. I'm, I'm a uh, standing in my in my driveway shooting a basketball kind oh, of okay. guy. I don't, okay. I don't run around much anymore. 
You know, I, I've thought about maybe one day just uh, throwing on the cleats. Like, give me one corner in, in training, just one. No. And let's see if I can even make it there anymore. No, no. <laughs> soccer was, playing soccer was never my, never my thing. Got it. Too much running for me. UIC getting a bit of a tug. They'll get the whistle in their favor. Let's see who decides to take it. Tercios on the near side. Been a quiet evening for him. Let's see if they look for him. Midfielder not afraid to take the long strike. Going far side now. That'll mark on side. Back to mid. Chicago State defense clapping down a bit. Making the turn. Looking for the pass. That's on side down and safe. Fontana. Nice job just dropping and stopping any opportunity. Yeah, did a nice job of cutting off the angle. So the only place that ball could end up was in his body, and he did a nice job of corralling it and not allowing a rebound. Up in the air. Sent from behind. Radovanovic, let's see if he has anything left in the tank. 13.45 remaining now. An exciting non-conference game. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been a fun game. We've seen a lot of action. We've seen a lot of opportunities that haven't found their way into the back of the net. We've seen some really good goaltending on both sides. And we've seen a, sort of an, I don't want to say undermanned, but a but, but yeah, maybe an undermanned Chicago State team really battling against mm -hmm. a team that's, that's, that's ranked in, in, in some polls uh, yeah. across the nation. And, you know, a game that, that on paper UIC probably should have, should have a fairly yeah. easy time with. But the Cougars are doing a really good job sticking with them. And they're not out of it yet if they, are, if they, if they can kind of tilt this field over the final, yeah. the final 13. First pass to the far side. Bjorndal sending it in. Opportunity now. Oh, over the crossbar again for UIC. Rinse and repeat with how many close calls it's been. Yeah, and if you're if you're UIC, you have to hope that that doesn't come back to bite you. They've had they've had the better of the scoring opportunities. They've had more scoring opportunities, mm -hmm. but you look up and they only have a one goal lead. So all it takes is a fluky pass or you know something that deflects yeah. off a shin guard into the back of the net, and all of a sudden you're saying, well. You know what happened? We outshot them two to one, but we walk away with a tie. Not to say any moral victories, but the Cougars fighting back from a two nil deficit. And with the amount of pressure they've, they've given up to six shots, two on goal. And again, at one point, that was an eight to one differential between UIC. So in the world of runs, that is a, you know, a five to four run. But it's it's more than that. It's yeah. it's just the the possession and the way they've played here kind of in the in the final ten minutes of the first half and in most of the second half. They've really they've they've had a couple of cracks that have allowed UIC to to get a couple of opportunities, but but they've played they've played the better positionally here yeah. for, for most of this match. Trickling out of play. And that, oh, I believe that stayed in. Oh, I thought it was going to go out of play. So good job by Chicago State not giving up on the play. Yeah, there's UIC, a, sorry, I would say UIC flat footed. And yeah, there's a second line over there that can kind of throw you a little bit as the ball rolls out. There's the white line and then there's the yellow line. And the yellow line is the out of bounds line. And sometimes it can, can catch you off guard if you're not, if you're not, if you're not being aware. Good job setting that out of play by Rivas, the sophomore of Guilford High School. So the question is, are you closer to Rockford or are you closer to here almost? <laughs> uh, I mean, I would say from a, 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 a distance perspective, okay. probably here. Okay. Um, from a time perspective, it probably takes me the same amount of time to Got get it. here as it does to get to Rockford. Yeah, right in the middle. So slow. Oh, saw one of the trainers about to run off onto the pitch. 10.42 remaining. Here 
on the Cougars Broadcasting Network on their YouTube channel. Appreciate all of you joining us. In UIC, they actually returned 11 letter winners from last season, along with 18 newcomers from this campaign. The transfer portal was very kind to the Flames this offseason, you could say. <laughs> yeah, transfer portal becoming more and more important at, at all levels, really, at, at, for all sports. Yeah. You, you hear more and more about it every year with some of the rules changing and uh, you know, who, who's allowed to transfer and when they're allowed to play after yeah. they transfer. So you're seeing a lot more of it now as, as, as some of these kids are, are just, they're looking for an opportunity to play. Yeah. And they go wherever they need to go to get that opportunity. So you see a lot more transfer portal stuff going on these days. Yeah, and as we stated, and then I don't want to speak you know, specifics of other sports, but the vast majority of coaches I've spoken, I've spoken to across a, a majority of conferences for NCAA men's soccer are very favorable with the transfer portal because they said, look, if our players, you know, if I'm a new coach and a current player fits a different system, it gives them opportunity to go find a coach with that system. Or, you know, as stated earlier for rebuilding programs, Hey, you know what we got, you know, I, I, I used the example of a coach I spoke with last week, a different example of we had, you know, 10 new recruits coming in. Nine of them ended up staying, but we needed one spot we had to fill. So we went, we found, we went in the portal. We found a grad student that, hey, I got one more year of eligibility and fit that exact position in our scheme. And they came and are able to play with us now. So it benefited both people because they literally had an extra scholarship to give yeah. and here you go. We were trying to give the yeah. scholarship away to somebody, who, you know, anybody. So you find somebody who fits that role for you, and who knows how things will end up. You know, in, in the world of college soccer, fitness is at such a different level that it's not as easy to say, and again, this is not to downplay, but when you have a sport like basketball five on five, you might have such an impactful high school player because it's such a more popular sport in the United States that, sure, we can have – you know, five freshmen come in and make an impact, not necessarily the same here at the collegiate soccer level. And then also you have, you know, we mentioned so many international players, and, you know, through my conversations with Coach Phillips about this season, Chicago is such a hotbed for international recruiting because he said we can find some of the best high school players from around the world and say, want to live in Chicago right. for a few years? Oh, right. okay, sign me up. And they said, you know, but that's also one of the challenges to keep some of the best local products from Chicago because they want to try to do something besides the big city life for four years. And so, you know, it's an interesting dynamic for both of these squads as we, as we have seen. Yeah, and that's, that's something that Chicago State is going to need to figure out how to crack into here if they yeah. really want to, to make an impact in, in D1 sports, not just in, in soccer, but, but in all sports as they have an opportunity here. Left foot, oh, knocked away. Good defense, Brockman again. Once again, goes near side, seven and a half remaining. Pace is indeed picking up. Out of play, that should, oh, that's gonna be a goal kick. Oh, so close. But as I was saying, it's, it's you know, that's that's something that, that, that now Chicago State, that, you know, they're really starting to invest into their athletic programs yeah. here. Uh, and that's something they're gonna have to tap into is is that that high school that that local mm -hmm. high school talent, you know, stay in Chicago, come yeah. come play here, come spend the next four years of of your life, you know, mm -hmm. living in and playing in in one of the largest and greatest cities in the country, and you know that sort of sells itself, you yeah. know, but you know an opportunity to, to 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 be a part of a of a foundation to you know you're part of of what we're trying to build here at Chicago yep. State you know don't you want to be a part of that you know mm -hmm. and this is a great city and you know it's again it, it sort of sells itself you yep. know it's nothing against UIC but mm -hmm. it's easier to sell Chicago than yep. it is DeKalb yeah. you know what i mean and, and so that's just something that that Chicago State has built in and that's something that they that they've started to tap into here as a as a as a college when it comes to their athletic programs and, and for many years just to speak positively of Chicago State it was more or less like a, a forgotten program here and now with the growth that it has the you know 
being in a, a, such a challenging conference and finding the right players, finding the local players and the international flavor is it's really starting to put this school on the map, athletically speaking. Yeah, and you're starting to see it, and in, in, in not just in, in soccer, both the men's and women's basketball programs looking to be much improved this season from last year. And a lot of what they're building off of is what we talked about, the transfer portal, bringing in students who maybe have a year of eligibility left that are, that are, that are looking to just continue their, their collegiate athletic career, but that helps build the foundation. And, you know, one year you have four wins, you look up the next year you have nine, and then you have 15. And now all of a sudden, the 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 top high school talent in yep. the area is going, huh? I can stay close to home. I can stay in Chicago. I can stay by my friends, and I can continue to play. Yeah. I can play D1 athletics at a high level without having to go halfway across the country to do it. Long range, not able to make the run. Timing just a bit off for Josh Torres. Back in the game after the brief injury delay is indeed Enrique Zamora out of Yuma, Arizona. Does have the tape on the left, left wrist. Be a foul on UIC, shove from behind. Under five remaining in the contest. Again, no overtime. No PKs to be seen during the regular season. Yeah, almost had one. For UIC, right at the beginning of the game, there's a tackle mm. right at the top oh. of the box, about another yard in, and, and we're talking a, a PK there. But that was a play that was that ended up not in the back of the net. It was a couple of corner kicks for UIC that led to their goals. Juhas now taking his time. The pink cleated Hungarian. Sends it sailing. Trying to get control. Is Zamora. Chicago State does have control. Let's see what they do with this opportunity. In the air. And just going right. I had to hold my breath for a second as Vasquez just a, as, a foot or two to the right of the right post. As momentum almost carried yeah. him into the net. That that pass was intended again for Danny Sergey of the big six foot five target. In, in that box, but Vasquez able to make the save, but his momentum definitely was carrying yeah. him backwards, and he was fortunate that it carried him backwards f outside of that near post rather than inside. We talked at the beginning of the match about an own goal. It's, you know, a goalie own goal is probably the only thing that's worse when you yeah. back into the net with the ball. Quick pace of play right now. Both teams fighting in the final four minutes. UIC having to play offensively so much to prevent the Cougars from spending and just making camp in the attacking third. No whistle called. Slow to get up is Tercios. It's going to be a throw in for Chicago State. Yeah, there was a collision there, and mm -hmm. Tercios got, I think, kicked in the shin on that collision, but there was no foul, so it was just play on. Short throw in. UIC now making a run. Munns had the first goal. Near side, oh, just went too short. They didn't get enough on that. When we talk about the speed of this turf, there wasn't enough speed on that pass. Nudge from behind, no whistle. Play on. Calling for it near side is, was Torres for the Flames. And I will say that, that even if they come up on the short end of this stick here, they're down 2-1 with about two and a half left to go. What we've seen from Chicago State here in their non-conference schedule bodes really, really well yeah. for the, for the Ohio, Ohio Valley Conference season this year. They've stuck with uh, a lot of very, very good teams here that, that lost to Omaha notwithstanding. They haven't been blown out of really any game Correct. this season. And, and, that, and that, that, that bodes well for, for what's upcoming here in the next couple of months for the Cougars. Again, 2-4-1. and one. If things continue in the final two minutes, we'll drop to 2-5-1. and one. But again, a one-goal loss to Bradley. 
a one-goal win versus UAB and Milwaukee, a draw against Belmont, a one-goal loss to Purdue Fort Wayne, and a one-goal loss to University of St. Thomas. Yep. Uh, you you add one goal to each of those, it's a completely different season. Yeah, it really is. And 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 f finishing has been a problem. Cougars have only scored eight goals on the season, so finishing has been a problem. That's something that'll come with time and it'll come with experience and it'll come with more opportunities. But I think once you get into, into your conference schedule and you know, maybe the teams are a little bit more evenly matched, yeah. you know, maybe we, we start to see some of the some of these two one losses turn into, you know, two two draws or, or three two wins for Chicago State. Down to seventy seconds remaining. UIC not afraid to take as much time as needed right now. And come away with a victory on the south side. The Chicago State have one more push in them. UIC playing very strong offensive defense. <laughs> Yeah. Or defense in the offensive zone. Yeah, they're just standing in the way. They're yeah. not being uber aggressive. They're not right up in the face, but they're they're just in the way <laughs> and and causing uh, Chicago State to just take time moving up the moving up the field. UIC now might as well take some of the time off the clock in the centering third, trying to find far sideline, knocking it out of play. 17 seconds. Do they have one more opportunity? Trying to find a lane, knocked away. Smart play again by Brockman. Sending ahead. Odiambo with three, with two, with one. Hands raised in a V. The visiting flames of UIC come away victorious. Two to one. Aaron, final thoughts. I mean, I think in the end, the better team probably won. But if you're Chicago State, you have to be really, really happy with the way you played, the way you battled, the way you competed against this against this UIC Flames team. Again, the the Flames had the better of the scoring opportunities. Mm -hmm. Probably the score probably could have and probably should have been a little bit more lopsided than two one, as they had a couple of point blank opportunities. But if you're the Cougars, you got to be really happy about the way you played, if not the result. Yeah. Well, again, the final, your score, 2-1. to one. Looking at some of the final numbers, 12-6, to six, your shot differential, 6-2, to two, the shots on goal, four official saves for the Cougars. Goals again, Munz in the 25th minute, Brockman in the 50th, and then Sergeyev in the 63rd, Chicago State, to bring it to within one. Well, it has been a pleasure working with you, Aaron. On behalf of my broadcast colleague, Aaron Shellen, I'm Peter Ferreri. Your final once again, Chicago State falls to the visiting flames of UIC, Two to one. This has been a presentation of the Cougar Broadcasting Network. Have a good night, everybody.